Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right. Good Lord. Thursday afternoon, market is down again. 1.5%, so down to $2.26 trillion. We're still holding above 2.2, which is good, but we get up to nearly 2.5, and then we drop down. It really is just sort of... I won't say so much all over the place, although it is a little bit all over the place, but we're in a sideways motion. But when I get to the charts, I'll show you what I was talking about. It, it's not looking awful, but it's not looking great. And it really is, you know, you've got to make your decision on where you sort of see things going. But we'll get to the chart shortly. All right, so total market cap, 2.26 trillion. Bitcoin dominant, dominance up ever so slightly, but not really. Still just hovering uh, around that 40% mark down to the 39% at the moment. There was some volume, which is interesting. So again, people buying the dip, but is it enough to hold it? Because it's things get pumped one day and then kind of dumped the next and pump one day and then dump. Not pumped and dumped because they're not pump and dumps, but just it, it does look like there's sort of a lot more trading going on at the moment. And there is talk that there's not really much retail here right now at the moment and that it is mostly the whales doing all that stuff. So for me, I'm not really buying too much at the moment. I'll, you know, again, Bitcoin, I'm always sort of buying Bitcoin. Just I'll be buying more of it when uh, we're not at all-time highs. At all-time highs, I'll bring my amount down a little bit. But Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then after that, it really is just watching all the other coins. And if they get to points, you know, price targets that I'm happy with, I'll put a few dollars into them, as I've already said. But I'm not, I'm not doing any really big buying at the moment. I'm sitting on the sidelines because I just don't know what's going to happen with the market. But I have suspicions we're going to go lower, hence why I'm not really deploying too much cash. You know, if I'm wrong, I'll be, I'll, you know, I won't have a problem with being wrong because, like I said, got my bags packed. But also, it means there's buying opportunities. But anyway, let's move on. I got sidetracked. Bitcoin, forty-seven thousand, just holding on to it at the moment. ETH gas prices have come down a little bit from the eleven, thirteen dollars they were down to about eight dollars. But look, they were a whole lot nicer when they were down in the three, four dollar mark. But really, we need them to be cents, not dollars. All right. So again, the market is down, sort of one point five percent. What's performed well in the last 24 hours, considering the market's down? Well, there we go. XFIN Network, XDC, uh, had a nice move there, 16%, nearly 17%. Near Protocol, our grand Adam. So look, there's some coins that have done all right. There's been some gains in there. But we've got to remember, overall, the market is down. And I can, you know... I never offer you a financial advice for a start, and I can't guarantee you, but I can almost guarantee you that these coins that you've seen gone up today in the next few days will likely have come down. Now, whether they've gone down more than they've gained or not, I don't know. I haven't been looking at the individual charts of all of these, but, yeah, it's just an interesting time. So what's not fared well then, considering the market's down? There we go. Olympus Dow continues to go down. Uniswap now going back down. They had a bit of a pump. People got excited. Uh, even I did a little bit about it going on to Polygon. But, you know, can it kind of hold? We'll have to wait and see. Phantom, look, one double-digit loss, and then we're into single-digit losses. So it's not the worst day in the world. But look, at the same time, it's not great either. So we need to keep that in mind. All right, now I want to go to the Bitcoin chart. And this is what worries me. So it has done what I thought it might do, not would do. Unfortunately, we've fallen back in this channel, this downwards trending uh, falling wedge is what they call it. Now, these are bullish, but the problem is you just, you know, sometimes it has to go way down to the bottom of this wedge before you finally get a breakout. Or you can get a breakout here and sometimes, it, again, it comes off and bounces off here once or twice and breaks out. But now we are back inside this falling wedge. So now we're really just waiting to see, can this hold? Or is this going to push down and, you know, hit the 42,000 and again, maybe even back down into the 30s? That's what I am waiting to see at least. And again, that's, you can see it right there. I thought we we're going to hold it and then not. And then we're in here and you can see it almost perfectly got rejected from it. And now we're back in this falling wedge. Again, falling wedges because we had a bit of a falling sort of wedge here. And look how bullish that broke out. But sometimes they've got to fall a whole long way. And again, maybe we've got to get down to somewhere sort of around about here, February next year, 
before we can get a really big bounce or maybe it just happens a whole lot sooner maybe it's simply as soon as december's over and we've only got a couple of days left of december one day left of december here in australia and then all of a sudden all the selling and you know the tax harvesting tax loss harvesting and all of that is done and you know first or second of january comes and you know everything's bullish again that would be great i just don't know if that's going to happen yet i haven't heard enough news to make me think that anything like that's coming but you know every couple of days you hear something bullish and then every couple of days you hear something that's not so bullish so let's move on because you already know where i'm at with bitcoin I've ta i talk about it every day so <laughs> if you don't know just watch my channels i mean watch my videos sorry so polygon upgraded quietly sorry upgrade quietly fixes bug that put two uh, 24 billion dollars worth of matic at risk now look this isn't the first time this has happened matic had something else happen like this uh, a couple of months ago and, and this isn't me throwing shade at matic all projects have these kind of things going on but there's good there's upside to it is number one the bug was found and number two the bug was fixed now they paid out i think it was the second biggest bug bounty to someone only a couple of months ago who found uh, a problem with their contracts uh, and again the second biggest pay ever i forget exactly how much it was but but it was uh, quite a nice reward and the good thing is this is white hackers finding this stuff we, we don't have the bad hackers this is white hackers who you know go through codes they actively look for problems they let the platforms know and then they get rewarded so that is the upside that it's a white hacker that found it the money wasn't lost and they're being rewarded which is good and we're going to have a look at that so the critical vulnerability in the network's proof of stake genesis contract was first highlighted by two white hat hackers on december 3rd and 4th via blockchain security and bug bounty hosting platform immunify now we go down to here and it says white hacker leon spacewalker was the first to report on the security hole on december the 3rd and will be rewarded with 2.2 million dollars worth of stable coins so that sounds pretty fair to me sound uh save them billions of dollars and they give a reward you know and again whether it's millions of dollars worth of reward or whatever it is a definite reward should be given and you know if it's a pretty big hack like that that could have cost a you know a lot more then i think you know a couple of million dollars is not really too much to ask for but you got to remember this is coming out of max uh, maddox budget and that is what's there's a lot of price suppression at the moment because maddox are actively selling their tokens you know buying hermes network and doing all the things they do so they're they're not just simply taking the money and becoming filthy rich although i'm quite sure they've done quite well but they are actively setting selling the matic token and that's why the price hasn't really exploded i think in the future should everything continue to go the way it's going and matic are now looking at bringing in a fee burning thing like erp 1559 on ethereum i think things look quite optimistic for and positive for matic in the long run but in the short term you know they're still selling matic actively but that's you know there's reasons for it at least they're doing good things with it now there was also a second white hat hacker uh named as white hat 2 and he's going to receive half a million matic so that's 1.27 million from polygon so again you know all of these platforms that are coming out they're untested until they're tested and then someone has to come in and test them again and then someone has to come in and test them again they should always be being tested and what we want is white hat hackers doing this stuff not the bad eggs doing that kind of stuff so you know congratulations to these white hat hackers for finding them and you know being rewarded because they did save the project uh, a whole lot of money and i when i say save the project a whole lot of money that's the investors as well because yeah we've obviously got money in there and if it was 24 billion dollars worth of matic that went missing polygon wouldn't be able to just you know kind of fit the bill and say hey don't worry we'll look after everyone else uh, and that is the risk of being in cryptocurrencies it is such a new space you know you really are still going to be considered one of the pioneers if you're in right now the majority of the world are not in cryptocurrencies yet and again the rumor not so much the rumor data showing at the moment there's not really a lot of retail here it is mainly the the big entities uh i you know whales things like that institutions that are doing or you know all this toing and froing at the moment and that's why i'm careful with getting into the altcoins because again they look like they're pumping today but then tomorrow they go down even lower and then they look like they're pumping but then they go down even lower and i think you're going to find a lot of these 
altcoins, not all of them, but a lot of them are pumping one day and then going down the next couple of days and they keep setting in lower lows. Now, again, I haven't gone through the charts to clarify that, but that's just the feeling I get. So for me, I'll just focus on Bitcoin without throwing too much money uh, into the space at the moment because I just get the feeling like maybe we're going lower before we can go higher. All right, moving on. I've already told that story uh, every single video, so I don't want to keep harping on about it. All right, Voyager. So Voyager Digital are being sued for allegedly misleading investors on trading free trading fees. Excuse me. The lawsuit charges the crypto exchange with charging hidden commissions despite its claim to be commission free. So again, there's positive news and there's negative news. It all depends on you know what day you're looking at the news and what's going on. So Voyager, you know, they seem like a pretty good app, but you know I'm always wary of you know where they're going to make money when they say that you know, or cheap fees and all the rest of it. They have to make money somewhere so the fees can never be that cheap. And particularly when there's like hidden fees and things like that. Now I'm not throwing shade on Voyager. They need to make a dollar, but you know, I don't know about these, you know, commission free. Again, if it's commission free there, they're gonna be getting you somewhere else on the back end. And again, I don't have any problem with Voyager, Voyager Digital making money. It's just, you know, the, the way they kind of word things it, it, it's nothing more than a selling tool really and if people aren't smart enough to you know look beyond that and realize no one's doing anything for free literally no one is doing anything for free there's always a price to be paid whether it's in money or it's in crypto or something people just don't do things for free you know not often anyway sometimes out of the goodness of their heart people will do things for free but that's yeah there's a price to be paid is all i'll say so we'll have to keep an eye out and see whether that has a big effect on voyager digital and last but not least so crypto we need real solutions to make the financial system work for everyone not just the wealthy i agree now this is uh senator elizabeth warren and she's saying that cryptocurrency is not a path to financial inclusion like crypto advocates claim Bitcoin ownership is even more concentrated within the top 1% than dollars. Now, I don't know, I guess I'll have to take a word for that. I'm not exactly sure, but I would say that has only recently become, uh, sort of become a thing because a lot of, you know, the original Bitcoin OGs have held on to a lot of their uh, their Bitcoin and now that's pushed them up into the 1%. Eventually, they will have to sell them and eventually they will... Uh, sort of spread out further and further. No one's going to hold on to all of their Bitcoin forever and not ever sell any. Like not even Michael Saylor. At some stage, he's going to need money and it's going to get to a point where it, you know, plateaus, whether it's at, you know, 500,000, a million, 10 million, well, whatever the price may be. I've got no idea what it's, you know, kind of final average price will be. It'll still continue to go up because it's, you know, scarce, limited supply and all the rest of it, but it'll get to a point where it's just not exponentially growing. I don't know what price that is. But once that happens, then there's no point in simply just buying Bitcoin. There's going to be something else out there that makes more money. And that is when Bitcoin will start to be sold. Now, when that's going to happen, I don't know. But eventually, everyone will sell some Bitcoin. And there'll be someone to buy it. So that's just something you got to keep in mind. But there were some people that came out and had a few things to say. So one user told the Massachusetts Senator, uh, this is not true. The fixed Bitcoin supply means ownership gets less concentrated over time in uh, congruence with adoption usage and creation of value. There is no other alternative to fixing the money printing problem that results in an invisible tax on the average system. I would sort of have to agree with that at the moment. Now again, the big money though, they're coming in and buying up all this Bitcoin and things like that. But someone else came out here and said, here it is, your argument is flawed. So I'm left to assume that you don't understand Bitcoin is not all crypto, it's BTC. You are only recognizing BTC as a crypto while ignoring an entire budding crypto industry based on the transfer of value of fractions of a penny. Now I would agree, we need to look at crypto as an entire space, not just Bitcoin, because eventually the big fish, they can't buy up massive bits of everything. They really can't. And that is what I like about crypto, is if something just gets too manipulated and too bought up by one, you know, well not so much one, but you know, all the big fish, 
then they'll just go and start, you know, something else will become popular and eventually they won't be able to keep up with all of it. And that is where the wealth will get distributed. But with the dollar, they just keep printing so much. And there's, you know, the money goes to the top end of town first before it goes to the rest of us. They won't be able to do that with cryptocurrencies. At least that's my thought. All right, not a lot of news going on at the moment. There's some of the stories that I found that I found interesting. And again, it's not looking good on the Bitcoin chart at the moment. But look, it could break back out, you know, in the next five minutes for all I know. And then we start to go up. But I, yeah, I've said it before. I just think we're going lower. I just don't know how much lower. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment. But if you are, congratulations to you because you've outplayed the market. And I'll see you next time.